Hello, I'm Paul Michaelman, Director of Content for HarvardBusiness.org, and I'm delighted to be joined today by Stu Friedman. Stu is the author of the Harvard Business Review article, Be a Better Leader, Have a Richer Life, and the book Total Leadership. Stu, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Paul. It's great to be here. Our pleasure. Okay, our goal for today is to help our audience become better leaders by simultaneously excelling in four areas of their life, work, home, community, and self. Right. So let's begin by allowing me to play devil's advocate. Go We're right. talking about work here. What do I care about the other three areas? Why care about your family, society, and your private self, your mind, body, and spirit when your primary focus is work? Well, the most important reason is that these other parts of your life affect your work. Right? So how things are going at work or in your private sphere of mind, body, and spirit and your sense of contribution to society or to your friendship networks, your social groups, all that affects your performance at work. And one of the things that we've found is that the more you can bring the whole person in, the more energy, the more productivity, the more commitment, loyalty, and focus you have at work. So it makes business sense to account for the whole person's interests and passions. Is what we're talking about here work-life balance, or is there something more to it than that? A lot of people talk about work-life balance. Uh, many more people today than when I first started uh, addressing this issue 20 years ago when my first son was born. Uh, and it's become a, a very present issue in many different sectors of our society and abroad. And there's a lot of important reasons for that. But balance is the wrong metaphor. Balance is the wrong metaphor because it implies trade-offs. It implies that you've got to give up one part of your life to have success in another part. And what I want to encourage people to do is to see the possibility of what I call four-way wins, which requires that you use leadership to better integrate the different parts of your life, all four, work, home, community, and self, and to uh, generate the support that you need from the key people around you for making change, creating meaningful, sustainable change in how, where, and when you get things done so that it's better for you and better for the different people in the different parts of your life. And what I find is that when you do that, when you take an approach that's not about trading off or balancing, but rather integrating in an intelligent way that fits your life, your world, that, you, that it actually works. So help me out here. I, like a lot of uh, members of our audience, I'm sure, were brought up with the mentality that life is about trade-offs, that yeah. you do have to be willing to sacrifice in one area to excel in another. So let's get specific here. Help okay. us understand how to take that leap to this new mentality. It starts with being real, which means understanding what really matters to you. And so there's a couple of really fun and interesting ways of doing that, looking at your core values, looking at your future. Uh, what's the legacy you want to live, uh, leave for the world 20 years hence? Um, what are the most important parts of your life today in terms of work, home, community, and self? So you take the four-way view and see, well, which of these parts are really most important to me? And then where do I focus my time and attention? And how are things going in each of the different domains? So all that is a part of being real, what really matters. The second piece, be whole, is about uh, understanding the needs and interests, what I call the performance expectations of the key stakeholders, the most important people in your life, in the different parts of your life. So you, you think about and write about who the most important people are and what your mutual expectations are at work, at home, in the community, and for yourself in terms of your own mental health, physical health, um, and uh, spiritual growth and development and leisure. And so you have a new perspective on where now can I create sustainable change? Where now can I experiment with how to bring the different parts together in a way that produces a four-way win? So that's the third part, be innovative. Act with creativity by experimenting with how you do things. And so the, the, the fun part is experimenting. So what kinds of experiments do people do? Well, they range from uh, changing the where and when of, of getting things done, what I call time shifting or replacing, uh, working at home a day a week, for example, uh, or in a more micro scale, uh, focusing and concentrating experiments where you uh, shut off your BlackBerry from the hours of 6 to 10 p.m. 
a couple of nights a week and uh, see, what, see what benefits that brings for the different domains uh, of your life, the different areas. Or there's the example that I write about in the article uh, of uh, a man who uh, was new to um, his community and was working at a financial services company, wanted to uh, become a uh, high potential for um, uh, executive uh, promotion in his company and also wanted to join a community board that would involve his uh, fiance, who was very interested in community service activities, and would also connect him more closely with his sister, who was a special education teacher. So his experiment was to join this community uh, board and to extend his network of professional contacts in the community. Of course, the, the bank saw that as, as something that was good for them, uh, and it was also good for his family as well as for himself uh, and his community. So those are some examples. Great. So we've got something of an arc here that begins with kind of introspection, reflection, discussion with others, finding that gap between who you are, who you want to be, and then experimentation. Right. So what, when I talk to people you know, months and years down the road about what they take away from this process, it's less about the impact of a particular experiment than it is on their capacity to lead change in all the different parts of their life. And that's really uh, a primary goal of this approach. Stu Friedman, thanks very much. Thank you. To learn more about how to put Stu's ideas into practice, you can visit his website, totalleadership.org.